Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. That is said in the word of God. And I have breath this morning and you have breath. So it is required of us to give God praise, to thank him for he's been so good to us. Yes, William P. Mackey in the song Revive Us Again, he said, We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light, who have shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Yes, it is time for us to be revived. It is time for us to start rebuilding what the pandemic may have broken down. So we come to Nehemiah in chapter 1. And I want to read from there for you and share with you for these mornings in regards to let us arise and rebuild. As you know, we had a full conference in the month of January on this subject of let us arise and rebuild. And my heart had been encouraged by so many of the men that preached on that subject, arising and rebuilding. So in Nehemiah chapter 1, I think that Nehemiah would be one of the, the better persons to take us through this period in regards to rebuilding, getting back to where we were. Chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible said, The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hagaliah, and it came to pass in the month of Chislu, in the twentieth year, as I was in Sushan, the palace, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which was left of captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. Verse 3, And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach, and the walls of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are bound with fire. Let me just stop and make a few comments here in regards to this. I don't know if you would remember the days when we had to travel abroad to make a living. Earlier on, some went to Santo Domingo, some went to Curacao and Aruba, some went to St. Croix, some went to St. Thomas. We went all over trying to make a living for our family. I had a little time in St. Thomas. And when I would go to St. Thomas, the men that lived on St. Thomas from home, when I would come in contact with them, many of them would ask you, what about my mother? Have you seen my mother? What about this person? Or what about that person? And then we would begin to speak about, you know, what's going on back home. It, it happens now with me. I am here in St. Martin, and every now and again, I will pick up the phone and I will call Mitchell, call Pastor Richardson, or call somebody back home and ask, hey, what's going on? Call the children and ask, you know, how things? And we would talk about home. And this happened with Nehemiah. Nehemiah was with the king. He was away from home. He knew that the brethren, there, many of them were captive. There was a, a, a brother by the name of Hanani. He came and certain men came with him, the scripture said. And Nehemiah asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity. And he asked them concerning Jerusalem. Hey, you know, what about my people? What about whom? And those whom Nehemiah asked, the Bible said, they said to him that the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province 
are in great affliction and reproach. Now, as we listen to this, we would notice that this is not a very nice looking way to say, you know, uh, sometimes you ask people, how are you doing? You say, everybody good, I'm fine. Well, Hannah and I and the folks did not say that. They said things are not good. They are in great affliction, the people, and reproach. Not only did he ask him about the people, he also asked him about Jerusalem. And here's what he said. He said, the walls of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are born with fire. Could you imagine your homeland where they would have walls for protection, and these walls are now all broken down. I, in my mind, I could imagine what it looked like. And he said, the gates are born with fire. Now, as I look at verse number four, I can see a man of compassion. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. When Nehemiah heard what had happened back home, he stopped all that he was doing and he sat down and he began to cry. Not only just a few tears running down his cheek. The scripture said he cried, he wept and he mourned for days. And then Nehemiah fasted. He stopped eating. And then he prayed to the God of heaven. What a good way to start when you get the news or when you see the walls are broken down. It touched his heart. Hmm. I am pastor of good news. If I would wake up one morning and notice the walls of the church, they're all broken down, it would touch my heart. I would also cry. And I would do whatever I can to see if I can have those walls rebuilt because this is the church of God. It touched his heart. He mourned, he fasted, and he prayed. In verse 5, the scripture said, in his prayer and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. He addressed his prayer directly to the Almighty God. In verse 6 he said, Let thine ear now be attentive, and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, watch this, day and night. For who? For the children of Israel thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. Now, as I look at this, Nehemiah is not even in Jerusalem with these people, but Nehemiah is addressing God and acknowledging that we all have sinned, for that's what the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Nehemiah is addressing God day and night in regards to the children of Israel. And he's confessing oh, for himself and for the children of Israel. He said, we all have sinned. And in verse number seven, he said, we have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept thy commandments, nor thy statutes, nor thy judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Wow. It seems like Nehemiah is saying, what is brought upon us, we brought it upon ourselves. And because of our sin, we are where we are. And he realized if we will confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he's asking God for forgiveness. I believe that each one of us need to stop and pay attention to ourselves. And we too have sinned and ask God to forgive us and to cleanse us. He said, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My time is up, but anxiously, I'll be back with you next morning to build upon this in regards to us going forward and we're building the walls. We're building the walls of Christianity. Let's get back to sovereign God. Father, thank you. Thank you for this privilege of being able to share. Thank you for every listener. I pray that you'll use your word to motivate us, God, to do what you want done. We love you, praise you, and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. Do have a great day. Remember, share this devotion.